With knowledge forged from years of restaurant experience, Chef Nathan Lockwood takes you into the heart of the kitchen and reveals the techniques you need to succeed. Join us at Restaurant Equipment World as we take you into the dojo. Let's talk about a couple different kinds of knives here. Uh, the first kinds of knives, one of the more common ones that you're going to see in kitchens are called chef's knives or cook knives. They're available in many different sizes. You can go from 6 inches. This is a 10 inch blade uh, and you can take these all the way up. I've seen 16 inch blades being used in kitchens. But keep in mind that the longer the blade gets, the little more unwieldy it gets and the less it's going to be balanced towards the handle uh, where you're going to want a lot of weight so that you can cut what you need to cut. Uh, you will also notice on some of these knives that they have divots on the side that is to allow airflow. and what that will do is if you're slicing cheeses or meats or anything that's going to have a tendency to stick to the blade that air gap there will prevent that uh, from sticking. And the next style blade is uh, Santoku. This is basically a Japanese style version of the Western chef's knife. Uh, you'll again notice that it doesn't have a very curved blade to it. Uh, and this particular one has the divots on the side to allow for the airflow as well. The next knife that is pretty essential for your kitchen is going to be a utility knife. Uh, this knife is going to take some abuse. You'll be able to get in and do some light boning work with it. Uh, you're not going to be able to just really carve away at a shank or something like that with it. But this is going to help you get through some smaller knife work and maybe some garmache work. Our next piece of equipment that's pretty indisposable as far as I'm concerned for a kitchen is going to be a good pair of kitchen shears. You can use these to cut the meat itself, you can use these to cut it away from the bone. Uh, you should definitely be using these to open any <laughs> silly boxes that you have. Do not use your knives please. Uh, but a good pair of kitchen shears is going to be indisposable in a kitchen. Okay, one, The next two knives I kind of want to pair together even though they're not the same. One is a boning knife. Uh, this is going to be used just like it sounds to get in. Uh, to sever the, the, the meat from the bone and to facilitate getting that out better. It's got a little bit of a thicker blade, obviously not as thick as, as a chef's knife so that you can get in between some things, uh, but it's a little more sturdy so that you can take care of cutting ligaments and tendons. The other one that is sometimes thrown into that same category is actually a fillet knife and sometimes you'll see one that's a little more of a hybrid. But your fillet knife is going to have a much thinner blade and be longer and the purpose being is that you want this blade to actually be flexible. That way you could bend it against the side of your fish as you're filleting and come down the side of the fish without having to lower your hand to do that uh, and make your cuts more even. So although they're very similar, they have very different uses. So the question's been asked uh, when it comes to cutting certain vegetables, especially like lettuce, iceberg, and romaine, things like that, uh, is it better to use a plastic knife than it is to use a metal knife? And the answer to that is actually yes. And there's two reasons why your lettuce is going to brown when you cut it. The first is that you've severed the actual veins, the arteries that that vegetable is using to move water around in itself. Basically you've, you've cut its arteries and that water is going to leak out and start to oxidize on the outside of that. So the two things you can do to try and reduce browning on your lettuce is you can use a plastic knife because the metal actually starts that corrosive process uh, when it slices through it. The other thing you can do is not use a knife at all and simply use your hands to break up the lettuce and as you tear it apart the lettuce will actually tend to tear at spots that is easier for in the same manner as when you're preparing to get asparagus ready to cook instead of slicing the ends off you should simply break it with a firm snap at the end and it will naturally tend to break where the harder ends of the root have met the softer part of the flesh.